Hello, I'm Dr. John Michaelos, and today I want to go over the difference between cataract surgery and LASIK surgery. Both are intended on improving the vision, and in a lot of cases, getting rid of the need for correction in the form of glasses and or contacts. So frequently I have patients coming asking to help improve their vision, and they don't know if they're a good candidate for either cataract surgery or LASIK surgery. And there are differences between the two. First and foremost, the anatomy of the eye. So the eye is actually constructed like a Galilean telescope. There are two lenses. The most powerful lens is the cornea, and that's on the front of the eye. If you wear contacts, that's the tissue that you put your contact lens onto. That is almost twice as powerful as the natural lens of the eye, the natural lens of the eye turned cloudy, that's what a cataract is. And so both LASIK surgery and cataract surgery are utilized to help make the vision better and also can be made to where we can reduce our need for correction in the form of glasses and or contacts. And many times we use lasers to help us with both. And that's where the confusion comes in. When patients come in and want laser surgery, they're not certain as to whether they're a candidate for LASIK surgery or cataract surgery. Traditionally, the divide is in patients' age group. Patients 40 years and younger are usually better candidates for LASIK surgery, a procedure where we do a laser on the front of the eye. Patients over 40 years old are usually better candidates for what's called clear lens exchange or cataract surgery. And again, in both, we use lasers to help assist us in accomplishing those surgeries. LASIK surgery falls under the category of corneal laser procedures. There are multiple procedures in laser corrective corneal surgery. There's something called PRK, which is photorefractive keratectomy. There's epilasic and there's LASIK. Of those, PRK, photorefractive keratectomy, is where we utilize the laser and employ the laser to do all of the work to the eye. The cornea has five different layers. We have to get beyond the first two layers into the third layer of the cornea before we can make a difference. So the cornea is basically like a sandwich, has bread, lettuce, tomato, meat, and bread. We have to get the laser to the meat to make a difference. With PRK, or photorefractive keratectomy, we utilize the laser to go through the bread, lettuce, tomato to do the work on to the meat, and then the body will subsequently heal back the bread, lettuce, and tomato. The advantage of photorefractive keratectomy is it is a procedure that doesn't require any surgical manipulation beyond just the laser. And it tends to salvage corneal nerves. And in patients that have dry eyes, it keeps us from making dry eye states even worse. There's also no surgical procedure done on the surface of the eye. So there's no wounds that in later time have a chance of reopening. Next is epilasic, and it's very similar to PRK in that we're taking away the first little layer, making a cap of that and replacing it. And that cap does form a biocontact, which allows recovery to be a little more comfortable. But basically, it's the same as photorefractive in that the body still has to regenerate the bread, lettuce, and tomato. Last is LASIK surgery. With LASIK surgery, we're creating a corneal cap and we're making a, a partial thickness cap or flap of the cornea. So we're making a partial thickness cut of the cornea and we do that with a laser. We reflect that cap back, exposing the stroma, allowing us to do laser directly to that tissue. In essence, that cap contains the bread, lettuce, and tomato. Reflecting that back, we do the laser on the meat, and then we put the cap back in place. The amazing thing about the cornea, because of the different pressure gradients of the eye, is that cap sticks back immediately, and there's no need to suture that cap back into place. The advantage of LASIK surgery over photorefractive and epilasic is there's a much quicker restoration of vision. Patients will have the procedure. They can expect having drops to numb their eye, sufficient to the degree where they have no pain or discomfort. The procedure itself takes about two to three minutes. There's no pain or discomfort during the procedure. After they're finished, they're immediately able to see. It's blurry, but usually better vision than they had before they had the procedure without correction. The next day they wake up, the vision's better, and they don't look back. With photorefractive keratectomy, the procedure itself is done completely via laser, there's no pain, there's no discomfort. The treatment takes anywhere from a minute or two. 
And right after the patient is finished, the patient's able to see. It's blurry that same day. There is no pain, there is no discomfort. They wake up the next day, the vision's still blurry, and the vision will remain blurry, usually for about a three to five day period of time. The US military aviators are only allowed to have PRK. They're not allowed to have epilasic because that cap can get dislodged with severe activities, like being ejected from a plane. The cap, even years later, with rough housing can get decentered. Our practice takes care of the Phillies, the Braves, and also the Blue Jays. And for professional athletes, I prefer PRK on those patients because I don't have to worry about their cap later in time when they're sliding into home base or doing things that could potentially cause an issue to the cap if they had LASIK surgery. So to summarize corneal procedures, it spans from photorefractive keratectomy, epilasic to LASIK. All of them are outstanding procedures and they are far safer than even wearing contact lenses. Contact lenses, if they're not worn appropriately, can cause infections that can spoil the vision and even cause permanent vision loss. Whereas LASIK surgery, epilasic, and PRK are surgical procedures that have risk, but tremendously lower risk than wearing contact lenses. Next, Cataract surgery is similar to corneal surgery in that the procedure itself is very easy with no pain, no discomfort. A patient that has cataract surgery can expect drops to numb their eye. The procedure itself lasts less than five minutes. There's no pain, there's no discomfort. And after the patient is finished, they're able to see. It's blurry that same day. By the next day, we expect the vision to be improved. The cataract is the natural lens of the eye. A cataract is shaped just like a candy M&M. It has a shell, it has a center. We make a small little opening in the front of that candy shell. They take all of the chocolate away, which is the cataract. They leave the shell clean and in place because that's where we place your new artificial lens. So in today's cataract surgery, there are ways for most patients to become independent of the need of glasses. Patients that have astigmatism, where the front of their eye is not perfectly round. Astigmatism is when the front of the eye is irregularly shaped. So instead of the surface shaped like a basketball, shaped more like a football. When there is astigmatism, the astigmatism does need to be made better. The astigmatism correction allows us to be able to see more things without the need for glasses. There are ways of doing cataract surgery where we correct the astigmatism, put in a high definition lens, and the advantage of that, if the patient is a good candidate, we have an expectation of them being able to see far away and intermediate without the need for glasses. So street signs when they're driving, dashboard of the car, a computer screen, all without the need for glasses. But to read something, to read a book, read a menu, read their text message, even read smaller font on the computer, Glasses are traditionally necessary if only the astigmatism has been made better. Like we had said previous, I'm a second generation ophthalmologist in a three generational ophthalmology practice. My son did my cataract surgery. I have multifocal lenses. I see all things without the need for glasses. I see far away, intermediate, and up close. If I'm given a needle and thread, I can put them together and I see perfectly fine without correction. As a result of my cataract surgery, I do have an expectation of my vision staying excellent for the remainder of my life. It's still important for me to continue to get annual eye exams to make sure that my eyes stay healthy. In conclusion, LASIK surgery versus cataract surgery. In patients that are younger without a cataract, so a clear natural lens, they may be the better choice to have LASIK surgery. Now, LASIK surgery won't correct their vision for the remainder of their lives. Patients that are good candidates for a refractive procedure like PRK, epilasic, and LASIK, if they undergo those procedures, as they mature and get older, they'll still develop a cataract at some point in time in their lives, usually after about their 40th birthday. It may not become clinically significant until they're 60, 70, 80 years old. And at that time, those people will need to have cataract surgery as well. Patients that have had cataract surgery, a cataract, it's not possible for the cataract to grow back if it's been removed the first time in total. And we do have an expectation for the patient to maintain the excellent vision that they've received from cataract surgery. But once again, it's still important to have an, at least annual eye exams. So most frequently, younger patients are candidates for PRK, epilasic, and LASIK. 
And patients over the age of 40 or 50 years old are traditionally better candidates for cataract surgery. There's exceptions in both classes. And so there are patients that we see in their 60s and 70s that we do laser correction or LASIK surgery to. And there are younger patients, actually the youngest patient I've done cataract surgery on is six days old. So younger patients can be candidates for cataract surgery as well. It's important to have your eyes examined to understand first and foremost that the eyes and your vision are in good health. And next, you can ask your eye care provider if you're a good candidate for potential procedures done to do away with the need of glasses and or contacts.